All right, welcome everyone. Matthew Osborne here, and we've got two guests with us today, Tina and Monty. Uh, Tina and Monty, why don't you guys give us a tiny background about kind of who you guys are and where you guys are at right now? Uh, we're retired. Um, we live in the middle of Maine, and uh, we began the book challenge about mid to end of January of this year, so we're still new. Okay, nice. How did you guys initially find out about kind of selling books online? What piqued your interest in that? Uh, like I said, we uh, saw the Rake and Profit guy on YouTube, and he mentioned book selling, and it was kind of funny because he was talking about his even his old mother could do it. And then we saw his old mother, and she's younger than us. <laughs> and so, uh, so I thought I thought it would be kind of fun and something to do during the winter months. And and sometimes we go away, and we have an RV, and we take off. And I thought we could even do this on the road. Um, yeah. So I thought let's give it a try. Nice. So do you guys travel um, a good amount of the time? We didn't this past winter because of uh, family illnesses and stuff, but uh, normally we go for three or four months and we go like Texas and, you know, kind of the Southwest in the winter. To get nice. So you guys have been able to kind of make some money with this while you're traveling as well. Have you tried it while you're on the road yet? We or not yet? No, we no, haven't tried it yet because we were here this winter in Maine. So we, uh, we, but we thought, well, this, it would work on the road, I think pretty well. No, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of people that use this kind of as a method to fund their full-time travels, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So yeah, definitely something you guys could do. Right. Well, that's great. So when you guys did, you guys went through the 100 book challenge, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you guys, what was your weekly scouting goal you guys kind of set for that? And how did that play out for you guys? Or did you set a weekly goal? Yes. yes. We, we, 100 books a week. Okay. So you did 100 books a week. All right. So, so I would try to go to as many places, whether, whether they be bookstores, uh, uh, wherever, whatever outlet I could find that week, and until I got my hundred books, you know, if it he took, was obsessed. If it took twenty hours or <laughs> yeah. thirty hours, that's what I did. If I, if it took uh, uh, four hours, then that was good because that's all I did. Well, that's awesome. So you got, you were successful getting pretty much hundred books a week for yes. the channel. But we also, um, we didn't really set our parameters uh, the way we probably should have because we were picking up two dollar books and a dollar book and and other books that really by the time that we sold the books and everything we were making just pennies. We learned the, the first the first two or three hundred books we sent in. We you know yes there was a profit but it wasn't much of one. Right. We got a lot pickier in our selection as the under book you know challenge went along. Right now we do about a, a ten dollar average. Yeah. Uh, profit on every book. Okay, ten dollars average profit. You guys have set your profit levels a little bit higher than for those lower end books. It sounds like, or the quick selling books. Yes. Yeah, he. But see, I prefer a quick seller. He likes a. He'll go for the. He takes more of a risk. Yes. A long tail. <laughs> I like a. I like a twenty-five, thirty dollar book. He doesn't care. Yeah. About, you know, and eight million, and I'm like, don't do this. Yes. <laughs> But, and we have sold some of those, and that keeps you coming back. It's it's sort of like going to a casino, I often tell her, where uh, the thing turns uh, green, and yes, I can pick it up, but sometimes it turns green and it says $75, and then you go, wow, like this is great. Slot machine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, it is. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. Every time you bring it out, you're waiting for that green. You want to see how much the dollar sign is in the top. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. He's addicted, yes. Yeah, yeah no, He's, I keep coming back. So, source your scanner. Were there any big hurdles for you guys when you first started selling? Did it come pretty easily? Or was there something that kind of was a big roadblock at the beginning you guys had to get around? We didn't use an app initially. We used our phones and, you know, and our phones were okay, but everything was extremely slow. So I'd advise anybody, as, as you have in the past, advise them to get an app that you can work with and it feels comfortable and to you. And a little Bluetooth scanner. And a Bluetooth scanner, right. And, and it just increased ours. It just tripled the number of books we were picking up and our profits. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, it's amazing how much a little scanner can increase your speed, isn't it? Yes. It, is. it was oh, shocking. Yeah. The first oh, time yeah. we were using it, it's like, wow, this is so much more. Oh, yeah. Just zip, zip, zip. You go through yeah, hundreds yeah, of books yeah. in was, What do you guys use for listing your books right now? Um, I signed up for, right at the very beginning with Exceller List. Okay. And I use them and um, we have the Scout IQ. And then I bought the EYOYO app, a little Bluetooth scanner to attach yeah. to the phone. And that's pretty much our system. And um, it, it's it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how has it been for you guys finding sources? What have kind of been your bread and butter sources you've been going back to? Are there a lot of sales in there or mainly thrift stores, libraries? What do you kind of do? We're rural right. Maine. So, we you know, we don't have, you know, we can't go to town and hit 10 stores because there just aren't any. 
we started with goodwill and initially goodwill was a, a, a fine source and then all of a sudden either there's more competition out there than the last few months mm. or goodwill has caught on because they used to sell their books for a dollar now they're listing their books for five and you're not finding the really big high so i think somebody's culling through before they get to the goodwill shelves now yeah so we had salvation army goodwill library book sales have we've done really well at those but we've learned to stay away from the larger towns, stick with the smaller towns. Because I think the larger towns, there are other book scanners out there. Mm -hmm. um, the little small libraries. No, it's so true. A lot of people kind of avoid the small sales. They don't think they'll be very much, but most of the time the small sales don't have any other scanners there. So you kind of get, exactly. get everything exactly. yourself. One day we actually got up early and we drove up to Lincoln, Maine, which is the middle of nowhere, northern yeah. Maine, because they were having a book sale on a Saturday morning. And we came out of there with two boxes full. Yeah. Wow. What's the most you guys have found in a day? Have you found any nice jackpots? The Blue Hill Library. Uh, it's a little coastal affluent summer community that had a library sale. And we, I probably four trips out of there to load the car. It was, it yeah. was. <laughs> and, and, and the little libraries, when you show up and you're going to buy all their stuff, uh, the tendency is that they uh, they like started looking for books for us. Maybe you want this book. How would you like to have? Uh, would, would you scan this one? Do you think this one? You know, because I, I was I like to. Uh, there's always people in the in the library that want to know what you're doing with the scanner. So yeah. I, I try to get with the person whoever's running the book sale and uh, normally tell them what I'm doing, show them the apps, show them how it works and everything. And, and it, as a rule, uh, those people tend to assist you. As, you. as you go around, they get bags for you. They, they, they try to tell you where the good books are. They, you know, yeah. they, they, it's been good. Like I said, sometimes uh, uh, we've been advised, uh, they go to another area where they have books that they're going to put up. And they'll say, okay, why don't you go through these? Why don't you look at these books? And so that's benefited us too. Why do you really face that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I never understand why people keep it quiet what they're doing. Because like you said, when you reach out and say something, it normally always benefits you. Yes, yes. But so, I have are you to to build any relationships right now with any of the stores in your area? Have you tried to get some backroom accent or is that something you're still working on? I think we're still working. Yeah, it's, still yeah, working. it's uh, we're trying um, to figure it out as we go. You become a familiar face. And yeah. when you're a familiar face, when you walk in, people know what you're going to do and they know you're going to buy uh, a bunch of books from them and they tend to want to support you. And I, I find that's true. The, the more you go to the same place. Mm. How much time do you think you average a week? And do you think it's gone down a lot since you've started or is it really random still? It's gone down. It's gone down. Um, I, because we're not, we're no longer, 100 is no longer our goal. We try to do about 50 a week. Uh -huh. And it, it's kind of hit or miss. It's because we're trying to do yard sales, and those are really random whether or not you come away with anything. We're keeping yeah. an inventory of over a thousand books. That's yeah. our that's our, our immediate goal, is to expand from the base of a thousand. So, right. so we started off with very cheap books, and we're replenishing those books with good, better books, which have a, a higher income to them. And what we're trying to do is at least keep that a thousand uh, alive at all times. Yeah. If we have a big bunch of, if we have a of sales it's like okay we've got to send more books in and then uh, i don't know we've we've put in yeah, about 1600 books so far i went to a, a, a the bangor uh library bangor is a, is a big city in maine for maine <laughs> cities it's not a denver or you know wherever you're at uh <laughs> it, but it's a, it's a it's a large city uh as maine goes and uh i pulled away about 90 books um and in about three hours uh, this awesome. weekend, and, and basically all of them are either over or around the ten dollar mark for profit. Um, I love that philosophy of kind of keeping that inventory level steady, because then you guys can kind of have a steady income source to rely on. And I like that you said when you see a lot of books sell, you're like, oh no, we need to go source more books. I like that you guys have connected that and see that, and that that's your goal right now is keeping that inventory level. That's a really really good goal. Yeah. It's, Has it been a lot harder to source now that you're chasing those higher profit books? Because, of course, you have more options when you have the lower profit ones. But has it been a lot harder to try and find those higher profit? Yes. It's hard to walk away, even though you you yeah. know, yes, you can sell this book for. You, I look at it as if we can flip it fast and still make a few dollars, I will. I would go that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But Monty, I keep calling, he's looking for the unicorn. He's looking for, you know, the signed, you know, one of a kind edition of something. And and it's like, that's not what we're doing. If we accidentally trip over it, great. But, you know, let's send the boxes in. <laughs> so. Do you guys sell just on Amazon right now? Or have you tried selling some of those like collector type editions on eBay? Or are you mainly sticking to Amazon? I was going to just say that years ago, I used to do that uh, when I was still working. Uh, I, I did it part time uh, because not only because it was I sold some books that really I, you know sold for hundreds of dollars and and once that happens it's once again it's treasure hunting and <laughs> once you once you make the hundreds of dollars you start thinking I can do this every day you know I just have to find it you know if you find a signed copy of a book and especially if it has a notation by the writer or whatever um, and it's a good book then uh, once you find one of those you think they are everywhere but they're you know they're hard to find and um, but I. This is a kind of a different ball game because I don't really have the time to look in every book and and say, oh yeah, that's the writer's signature or this note is from the writer to his uncle or or our friend or this is the writer writing uh, somebody a reader that type of thing. I don't have time to do that. So you have to kind of got to say, well, if I see it uh, and I and I immediately look at it and I see, well, this is a Hemingway. Uh, uh, I wonder if this is an original copy. I might look at it in, in for a while, but otherwise, I'm so busy scanning books to try to get hundreds and hundreds of books in a in a you know at one sitting. We do have we do have a few a few books listed on eBay. I haven't done merchant fulfilled Amazon yet. I keep thinking we ought to cross list them if you can. I'd have to go to research that. But we do have some of the uh, like the signed books. We instead of shipping them in, we have them listed on eBay. And we've sold, I think, two. They're not fast sellers for sure, but yeah. we have we have gotten rid of two of them. I would say uh, maybe very important to what other people are doing is getting discouraged early on. I can see where a lot of people start and drop because off because of the fees and because <laughs> uh, it's just like a lag time between when you get books and box books and send them in. And they finally start selling. Is to start thinking well. You know, I, I did 300 books and now I'm not making the money I thought I was going to make the first month. But we've seen over the months that uh, this pays off not the first month, but the third month and the fourth month and the yeah, fifth month. It, it, I, was, I was shocked. The fees, the fees at, at first, I'm thinking all our profits being eaten by fees. Yeah. But it takes, like he said, it takes a couple months until that you get the ball rolling. Did you guys consider dropping off after that moment or two at the beginning when you didn't see anything? Or were you set that we're going to do it for three months, finish this out? Yeah. People I would have dropped. People like yourself <laughs> encouraging us to, to stay, stay with the ball game and, and, and continue to put 100 books in every week. Yeah. So we said no matter what happens, we're going to put 100 we're books gonna, in every week. We're going to finish the challenge, even though it's like, I don't think this is making sense. Um, we're going to finish the challenge and then see what happens. And by then you're addicted anyway. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah, you guys kind of already touched on it, but if someone else is in a similar situation where you guys were, maybe they're retired, they're trying to find a little extra income on the side. What kind of advice would you give them? Do you think it's too hard for some people to start or what kind of advice would you give those people? Well, I, I would say, you know, do it as a short term goal. Set it up. Don't don't look at it like this is my long term solution. Look at it as a short term project. I'm going to try this and tr commit to you know ten or twelve weeks of you know doing the work and trying it. And I think by the time you get to the fifth or sixth week, you're going to see the benefit of it. And then you can tweak the volume to your time and you know what you're looking to get out of it. Yeah. One of those things like jogging, you got to get out the door. <laughs> to exercise, you got to get out the door. It, it uh, just to sit in your living room and listen to people talk about selling books is is half the game. The other half of the game is getting out the door and actually, inter, uh, you know, getting with uh, sellers, getting with librarians, getting with uh, uh, getting out to those places where you normally don't visit in the community. I normally don't go to Goodwill. <laughs> And so it, it's kind of a I now don't it's say, my new addiction. I don't want to say it's a culture <laughs> shock, but it is a little bit of a culture shock. And and we go to the bins, uh, Goodwill bins in Portland. It's a two hour drive for us to, to, to there. And, and you're uh, waiting elbow and, deep in God only knows what. Fish and know. Everybody's wearing <laughs> surgical masks uh, as if they're in med school. I and, never knew this and, place and, existed, but it was so much fun. People are uh, <laughs> just bending over these huge bins. Pulling books out from the bottom and scanning them, and 
And uh, but every time we come away, because we're paying twenty three cents a pound, yeah, for books, it's a yeah. and it's very easy to come away with a. Uh, Fifty to a hundred books that are worth uh, close to a thousand dollars. You have a lot of competition yeah. with those bin sales at Goodwill. Yes, you got to be there in the you morning. Got to be there early, and um, <laughs> right. I wouldn't go on a weekend. <laughs> yeah. But no, I remember my very first experience with one of those bin sales. It surprised me because I didn't. Uh, you know, they pull the bins out every once in a while that everyone yeah. goes for, right? I didn't see anyone around. I was like, oh, okay, I get this all to myself. And as soon as they pulled that bin around, there's like people came out of everywhere exactly. and just started throwing books. And oh, yeah. it's a great exactly. experience your very first time in there. It's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a feeding frenzy. It is, <laughs> yeah. really. And they, where we go down there, they line, people line up and then they, it's like, you know, uh, they uh, they say go, and everybody rushes to the to the to the bin and starts pulling <laughs> away. You know, um, you got to be fast. And uh, obviously, <laughs> having Wi-Fi and whatever working with us or a uh, YouTube uh, uh, scanner app, scanner app, app yes, or yes. something like that Excuse gives them, gives yeah. you a little bit of an advantage. I watch watch people now fooling with their phones and trying to take pictures and trying to bring up the uh, the app and all of that. In the meantime, I've gone through thirty books. Yeah. So one of the things is to be ready, turned on, everything working. Uh, as soon as you get to to the bin, you're ready to start pulling books and scanning them. Yeah. Definitely. So do you guys use Scout IQ right now? Yes. Yes. Yep. What is your uh, kind of experience been with Scout IQ? What things do you like about it? What's kind of helped you along with Scout IQ? Um, I have I haven't messed with the default settings. Um, at some point, I got a really look and try to understand how to manipulate those a little bit better. I've just left them the way they are. Um, we, um, yeah, I think, I think I'd like a, a lesson or a YouTube lesson and, you know, just to how to work those default settings and what we should be. Cause I mean, I know looking at, okay, if it's only says $2 and we're paying a dollar, it's, you know, you've got to, and yeah. you know, a way, four or five pounds, you have to take weight into consideration. And I know that Scout IQ does that to some degree, but when whenever we're entering it in, it's always a little bit different. Um, but I think I'd like the next step is to really understand the, you know, the parameter settings and how to manipulate those. Yeah, definitely. So what's your guys' kind of future plan for your business right now? Are you hoping just to keep that inventory level and then do that while you're out? traveling are you trying to grow it at all or what's oh yeah we oh, want to yeah. we want to grow it and we want to do it when we travel our goal is to get to five thousand <laughs> he's got big goals that's our goal <laughs> our goal is to is to eventually get to five thousand and doing what and, and eventually be where we are right now with putting 50 books in them and staying at five thousand yeah. or 60 books in a uh, a month or or a week yeah and, and I and had to stop him from ordering that truckload of Gaylords to be dumped in our driveway. It's like, don't do that. We have no place to. Put that. I, I think <laughs> I love it. I love that dynamic between you two. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I would have. Them. He's obsessed. Oh yeah. I, I think there has to be a treasure in every Gaylord. So I, I would definitely have them and probably be giving the whole thing back to Goodwill. Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, maybe eventually I'll do that. But right now. Uh, especially this time of year with lawn sales, a uh, libra lot of library sales right library now. Sales. So we've got, and um, you know, I, I'm going less and less to Goodwill because yeah. of the fact that others go there first. And so I think there are area ones. I think pulling the good books first. Yeah, because you know, that, that is tough. There's a few areas around here as well that they've kind of figured out sellers, and so they jack the price of the book up, and then yes. there's quite a few that are. What would be worth it, but they're not anymore because it's a six dollar book, right? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, there's not enough profit anymore for us. But if you wait them out, they've overpriced the book. People aren't going to buy them. They're going to end up at those bins. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> so, how have you guys gone about tracking your sales and stuff like that? Have you just been using the Amazon tools, or what have you guys been doing for that? Mostly the Amazon, Amazon. tools. Um, I have downloaded some of the reports and then, you know, processed them through Excel list. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, we just follow along on the Amazon and that gives us a rough idea. Uh, probably about once every two weeks. I'm, I'm looking now at repricers. I don't know at what volume inventory repricers make sense because I'm the repricer now. Yeah. Uh, I, I go through my I go through the inventory and I, I just kind of keep you know scanning through it but i mean that could be a full-time job at some point 
well, if it looks at some sort of an automated repricer, um, maybe that will be a prize when we hit 2,000 books or something. <laughs> but, we uh, uh, daily follow our statistics. Just like everyone else. He's obsessed. We, we daily <laughs> button, we talk about it every single day. We talk about what we're selling, why a particular book sold, you know, when we uh, especially when one of those really weird high price books. Yeah. And it sells your oh, donut. Oh, it does. Yeah, we yeah. had a big book on Burgundy wine that we picked up at the bins for cents. Sold it for $107 almost the day it arrived at Amazon. At, at Amazon. And it was wow. it had a high rank. I thought this thing's gonna sit there forever. Uh, <laughs> weekend, uh, it's called Maine Cruising. In fact, I have another one of those. We found a second one. And, uh, uh, and the Maine Cruising book sold for $54. It's on Sailing the Coast of Maine. It's it, just a weird book. It hadn't been on Amazon 30 days. And it, sold. Yeah. And, it and, and it hadn't sold before. So sometimes you kind of have to take that into consideration, you know, a hunch that maybe this <laughs> is going to sell. But, you know, <laughs> I don't think that you can turn away all these books because there's zero sales in the last six months. I think yeah. that, I think you, you have to take a risk occasionally with- He a, makes up his own rules. I like black and white, and he makes up his own rules. <laughs> Especially if you're getting books for virtually nothing, you know? I mean- <laughs> yeah. you, you The highest price book you've sold up to this point is? I think it was that $107 one. $107 one. Although he's got one in there that we picked up at the Blue Hill Library on Ferraris. It's a big coffee table Ferrari book, and that's supposed to go for two something if anybody is interested in a Ferrari. Yeah, Ferrari. <laughs> if anyone, anyone watching wants to buy a book on Ferrari, <laughs> yeah, it's, right. it's lovely. If they're driving a Ferrari, <laughs> probably they're not watching this year. Too. <laughs> yeah. Very but, true. Uh, yeah. Well, I love that you guys have stuck to it and did that 12 weeks and are sticking out. I love the plan you guys have in place. That's awesome. And keeping that inventory there. Are there any kind of last minute tips you have for people watching this wanting to get into this? Um, uh, it, don't be afraid to pick up books that are, are not something that you would think. I, I, I use an example. Um, I, I picked up a book on cables and linemen, which is for people that put, put it was up. A, yeah, it was a manual. A manual for people who put up cables and lines on telephone poles. I thought, well, this isn't going to sell. And it was it was uh, about a $50 book. And I sent it in and that too, within two months, sold. So um, she picked it up. But <laughs> in two months, it sold. And, and I, I you, fiction is really hard to gauge. Yeah. And yeah. I would say that any time that you're picking, you should be picking 70, 30 fiction. At most. Yeah. And 70 of them would be nonfiction and, and things related, but, you know, that are nonfiction. What category of books are your go-to books when you go into a bookstore? Oh, uh, 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 um, self-help. <laughs> I mean, I like I, what, 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 yeah, religion and self-help. If you go through all the, the 600 plus books we've sold since January, you will see that there are uh, a good percentage of them are self-help you know, or religion. But, um, it was really funny. In January, when we first started, I bet we sent in 10 of the Marie Kondo tidying up books. Yeah. And yeah. then the market just plummeted. It, in January, those were big books. And now they're just kind of sell, sell books. Um, but it was funny because they were, everybody was, you know, spring cleaning, purging their houses, and they wanted the book. So uh, it, and it cycles. And that's I, another thing, the cycles. And I know you've talked about it on your show, uh, especially when you're dealing with college books and things of that nature, that there is a cycle that goes on during the course of the year. Yeah. I don't know if you said it or somebody said it, that there is a current of used books running through every city in the country. And uh, and there are. There, there's no shortage of used books. Even in small town Maine, there's no shortage in used books. Yeah. We have yeah, sourcing textbooks, um, and I, you know, there are some schools around, and uh, we just gotta, you know, find the right way to get access to the students at the end of a semester to purchase those. Um, so I think maybe you know, in the fall, start making some contacts at various schools in the area. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much for answering those questions and stuff, and guiding some people through here. Uh, as a thank you gift for coming on and doing this interview. I don't know if you can see, can you see the shirt I'm wearing right now? <laughs> yeah, I love it, I love it, yeah. So I wanna send both of you guys a shirt. Uh, oh, wow. a and also I wanna send both of you guys an IOYO scanner 
They're okay. kind of sponsoring this video and they want to send you guys a free scanner. So if you okay. guys you with the shirt, so hopefully you guys can have some spares there or bring some people right. along with you. And I, the, I think that's a great scanner for somebody that's just learning how to make it all work because we haven't had any right. trouble. With it's effective and everything. So yeah. yeah, I'll have a link to that for everyone watching in the description below too, if you guys want to go check out that scanner. But you both will be getting one of those, and both of you are getting one of the Janet shirts as well. So. Loves t -shirts. This will be I good. love t shirts. So it, <laughs> it's, a, it's a go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank and, you. By the way, this barcode is scannable. And if you bring it up, it's going to be the Margin of Safety book, that book that sells for $800 plus. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. oh yeah. Wow. Uh, in case you want to scan the shirt, you can see what it pulls up. So yeah, thank okay. you guys for having fun with me on here and answering those questions. It was great to get to know both of you. That was fun. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy Bye, the year. Enjoy the hundred book challenge. Thank you very much. Bye.